through the season, the World Rally Championship, it's the hard stuff. The Acropolis Rally might start as a picture postcard, but the ancient monuments speak the truth. This is one of the oldest, but potentially most ruinous rallies in the championship. The terrain has been testing the teams for over 40 years. The speeds here are up on Cyprus, and that means the damage to cars and tyres from the rock-strewn roads rises as the punishment is increased. Punctures are commonplace, and suspension failure is a fact of life. Here, the service crews will earn their money. If cars survive, they'll carry the drivers over 1,600 kilometres on the mountainous roads of southwest Greece, around the winter ski resort of Parnassus. The race against the clock comes on the 20 special stages, covering a total of 398 kilometres. The fastest car at the end of three days wins. This rally has been held since 1952, but for the last five years it's been dominated by one man. Colin McRae has won in 1996, 1998 and 2000. He arrives this year on the back of victories on the last two rallies in Argentina and Cyprus. Both of which were dogfights with fellow Brit Richard Burns. Like Cyprus, winning Greece could be as much about tactics as outright speed. The start position is governed by the previous day's times. The fastest go first. But starting first is not always an advantage on gravel. It means you clear the worst of the stones for your competitors. So until the final day, expect a game of rallying chess. In Cyprus, Ford knew this only too well, and so McRae slowed down, allowing Burns to take the lead for the last day. Burns wasn't happy with McRae's tactics. A war of words has now started. It's going to be a big issue here again? Yeah, but it will be in some stages a bit, yeah, but yeah, everybody knows that, and Richard knew that in Cyprus, so I think he's winded himself up more than anything. Of course, Colin would say those things because he won, but the fact of the matter is that he dropped to second position on the road for the last day in order to be second, um, to be able to get more grip on the road. So, I mean, I think the, the actions speak louder than anything that he says. But the man they both have to beat is previous Triple Acropolis winner, Carlos Sainz. He's been quietly stacking away his podium places, but he's gone almost a year without a win. I'm really looking for a victory. We have been very close in Portugal, close in, uh, also in Cyprus, and I'm really looking for a win there. Yeah. Amazingly, four-time champion Tommy Mackinnon has never won in Greece, always the victim of mechanical problems. Cyprus was another terrible rally for Peugeot. Not one of their cars finished. Does this mean then that Marcus Grunholm's title hopes are over? Colin McRae has just shown that within two rallies you can actually turn your season around, so it's not all lost yet. Uh, not really, but it's, it's quite difficult, I think, to, to... Now we have two bad rallies and tough rallies, Greece and, and Safari. OK, everything is possible, but uh, it's not so easy. Subaru are running four cars in Greece. Hoping for better luck than in Cyprus is Petter Solberg. The Norwegian's car went up in flames. Back in the fight is Citroen. This is their debut on gravel in the World Rally Championship. But there was drama during the pre-event shakedown when Thomas Radstrom's car had a small electrical fire. In Cyprus, Hyundai were setting lightning quick times. In Greece, they hope for more of the same. But question marks still hang over Skoda. Will they stay or will they pull out a world rallying at the end of the year? Almost midway through the season, the championship is close. No one wants to give anything away. And this is how it stands. Tommy Mackinnon is losing his grip at the top of the table with only one point separating him from Carlos Sainz. And with consecutive first and seconds on the last two rallies, McRae and Burns have joined the race. Day one of the rally, based in the mountains above Greece's Adriatic coast. Six stages in all, 143 kilometers of competitive driving with one service at Parnassus. 
before the start, Mackinnon and Sykes look worried about the gravel. Slippery underfoot and slippery under tyre. Bad for both drivers running first and second on the road. Portrayed by the press as arch enemies, McRae and Burns. Tommy Mackinnon, though, had bigger worries than his popularity with the other drivers. His championship lead was now under threat. A winning Greece, crucial if he was to hang on to it. Stalled on the line, a dreadful start for the four-time champion on a day when he knew that it would be his job to sweep the road clear of gravel. You can see the rocks and stones carpeting the road, rooster tails of dust spouting from each wheel. In the car, the gravel peppers the underneath of the Mitsubishi as Mackinnon struggles to set even eighth fastest time. Second off the start, Carlos Sainz, and already ahead of him, the line is forming clearly. Mackinnon has swept the road for him. The man on the move, from no points a month ago to championship challenger today, Colin McRae. Even with a puncher on stage one, McRae was fourth fastest. Now there's only dust and not waves of gravel erupting from under the tyres. Sleeves rolled up and eyes down for full speed, Richard Burns. Twice beaten by McRae in the last two rallies and this time determined to beat the Scot. On stage one, Burns was fastest. champion Didier Auriel, Peugeot 206 World Rally Car, a winning combination in Spain, but not in Greece. Just a few kilometers into the rally, the clutch breaks and Auriel is out. Bad luck again striking down the veteran driver. Three kilometers into this stage, Didier was complaining about the clutch. So we try to drive a bit slower to reach the finish, but uh, unfortunately it's going quite uphill here and no chance to do more than 4.8 kilometers or so. As you can imagine, it's a bit frustrating. Just hours before the start of the rally, Francois Delacour barreled off his mountain bike when his T-shirt got caught in the spokes. For a time, he thought he'd be unable to start. But start he did, only to be slowed by a puncture and his painkillers, which numbed his senses. I think I hit a rock. I didn't feel anything, but I hit a rock at the rear for sure because I had a sudden new puncture and I finished the stage uh, 10 Ks like that. Stage one of the rally and the first gravel stage driven in anger for the new Citroën Zara. 11th quickest, Thomas Randstrom and co-driver Tina Turner. A last-ditch chance to revive his title hopes, Marcus Grunholm was third quickest on the opening stage. Always good in Greece, the Subaru Impreza. This is Petter Solberg, who set second fastest time over the 26 kilometers of Mendelitsa. Problems instantly for Kenneth Eriksson in the Hyundai. His turbo boost down and his hydraulics in trouble too. Stage two was only half the length of stage one, but no less demanding. After losing almost a second a kilometer on stage one, Tommy Mackinnon was expecting to lose by the same amount on stage two. Sure enough, over almost 11 kilometers, he dropped another nine seconds. Sykes was pleased with the amount of gravel that Mackinnon was sweeping off the road. He knew also that the next few stages would clean even more. As in Cyprus, you can see the clean line that Mackinnon has left for the Spaniard. Keeping on it, though, is like walking the tightrope at 100 kilometers an hour. 
para izquierda rápida, ojo, se cierra, ¿eh? frenando mucho, para derecha okay. media, se cierra. McCray's puncture on stage one made the Scot wary of attacking stage two too hard. His unusually reserved style cost him eight seconds and two places overall. Burns behind the wheel is a picture of tranquility. Most people work up more of a sweat on a Sunday afternoon drive. But until the tactical part of the rally ends after day two, there's no point thrashing man or machine. Flat left 20, meet your right in. With Oriol already out, the mood at Peugeot was now understandably jittery. Robert Perra not only had to worry if his car would survive, but why it was so slow. Tire problems left him way down in 50. With Mackinac struggling for grip, Freddie Lotz was the fastest Mitsubishi on stage two, and now just seven seconds behind Mackinac overall. On board with Lotz, the yellow stickers on the steering wheel tell him when the wheels are pointing straight. Third fastest for a second stage in a row, lifted Grunholt to second overall. Just a blink of the eye behind Peter Solberg. With no spare tyre, Armin Schwartz had to tread carefully on stage two. The fastest of the two Skodas, he was 14th. But into the lead on stage two jumps Subaru Rising star Peter Solberg. Just to see the difference between Mackinac running first on the road and Solberg running 12th, the same corner, and both cars on the right, Mackinac, on the left, Solberg. No wonder Mackinac is losing time hand over fist. All four Subarus were running in the top ten. This is Toshi Arai in ninth. My mathematics are correct. You're leading after the first two stages. Are you surprised to be leading? Yeah, but you know, today it's not the important day. I, uh, it's no pushing at all, and I'm driving a little bit cleaner on the roads that, uh, than the other guys. So uh, I think we have to slow down a little bit. I'm still a little bit wondering what is going on tomorrow. Maybe there is not so many drivers at the moment who want to be first car tomorrow and uh, so we have to follow what is going on in terms of tactics where does this put you are you happy to be where you are now or is it going to be a case of dropping back later i don't know yet we have to see some stages how how the the first cars are running compared to us and then we have to, to see if it's so bad to be in the front or not what kind of effect do the first two days really have is it just a case of surviving it not really, no. We're, we are, we're pushing as hard as possible. I think this rally position on the road is not going to be as, as important as it was in Cyprus. And, you know, certainly we're just going to push as hard as we possibly can. That's, that's it from start to finish. I don't think anybody wants to run first car just as they didn't want to in Cyprus. So um, maybe today won't be flat out. Thanks the question. Why bother with today if it's all going to be cat and mouse until the final day? Or tomorrow, because it'll be, it'll be the same then. What, uh, what would be good is to have everybody the same. Temperatures in the Greek mountains were in their mid-30s by the time stages three and four got underway. Hot under the collar was Tommy Mackinnon. He'd already lost half a minute, and again he was losing time fast. On a bed of gravel, his Mitsubishi was all over the place. It took all of his skill to keep it on the road. In just under 50 kilometers, he lost another 40 seconds. Even one 
position on the road made a huge difference. Sykes was only losing half of Mackinnon's time. But the difference was not only on the road, but in the tyres. The Pirelli seemed to work much better on the gravel than the Michelin's. Also on Pirelli's and also in a form, Colin McRae. With the safety of a spare tyre now in his boot, he was back to full speed. On stage four, he set fast his time and edged into third overall. McRae was now back in the groove. The man McRae passed for third was Richard Burns. No love lost between the two Brits. The two were at it like street fighters. But Burns complained that Ford were using pit boards to tell McRae his time. McRae couldn't have cared less. The road section between stages three and four, and Harry Robin Perez swaps over tyres. It's in the vain attempt to try and improve his times, but a slow changing gearbox and tyre trouble meant the Finn was down to 10th. If Delacour's wrist was causing him trouble, he broke through the pain barrier to set second fastest time on stage four. Four months away from the World Championship, and Thomas Radstrom took a few stages to get back to speed in the new Citroen Zara. But on stage four, he showed its potential with the fourth quickest time. Marcus Grunholm was in third and quietly confident of a return to form when his season took another dive. Watch for the rock in the middle of the road. Grunholm straddles the rock, thumping the sub guard and puncturing the underneath of the engine. Again, the reigning world champion was out of a rally. His tally from the first half of the year, just four points and his title hopes in tatters. Before you broke your car, before, tell me that the... It seems to be really difficult now. I, 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 don't, I don't believe how difficult it is. Uh, we were now, I think, uh, more than unlucky now. Really, really. Is that it for the championship? Yes, I think so. It's, now it seems to be really, really bad for the championship, so I cannot say anything. Not many drivers wanted to be oh, leading, but, but Petter Solberg was enjoying being in front. He attacked stage three, three so hard it, it begged a question bypass. from his co-driver, Phil Mills. Only tyres left. After stage four, his lead was five seconds. It was not all going Subaru's way. Toshi Arai went out be before late. stage four hurry, when his gearbox gave up the ghost. <laughs> After finishing fourth in Cyprus, now Arai's dream of a podium place in Greece was over. Hyundai had fixed Alistair McRae's turbo problems, but still the Scott was a little off the pace. Teammate yeah, Kenneth Erickson was in dire straits, though. Gordon, Kenneth. Who can 
Gauche, gauche frein pour épingler droit 60. Gauche frein pour épingler droit 60. Oh. A spin on stage four cost him a few seconds, but no places. Both Citroëns were in the top ten, though. Pat Solberg was not the only Subaru driver on the pace. Marco Martin took his first stage win on stage three. And Gilles Penizzi was fifth overall. So Marco Martin making his mark on the rally and cementing his second place behind the two Britons, Panizzi and Carlos Sainz. It didn't take long for Burns and McRae's war of words to resurface. This time the subject, Ford's timing boards. Ford are putting out markers on these stages. Why and is that off-putting for you? Oh, I don't know why they're putting them there because, well, I guess they're showing their drivers some kind of information, but uh, I don't know what they're doing. It's just to give us an indication of split times with the cars in front. Um, it's, OK, at this stage of the game, it's, it's not making a big difference, but at least we know, you know, if you're pushing like hell and you're slower, then obviously, you know, there's no point in trying any harder. But psychologically, does it affect you when you see that kind of thing? Not, not really. <laughs> not really. We know they can, we know they can do things, but so can we. Delighted to have had his first career stage win, Marco Martin. It has been quite easy for us. Most of the stages are a bit cleaner for, for us because we are running so far behind, and, and that's why it's probably easy for us. Not a good day for the Finns. Seems to be seems to be difficult. Seems to be difficult. It is. Uh, I cannot find the best. It is so much loose everywhere it is. It's, it's very, very hard. Stage five was cancelled. There were just too many spectators on the road. Panic for Carlos Sainz on the road to stage six. The Spaniard forced to change a tyre, but also he was having clutch problems. A sign that all the teams were about to use tactics to determine the positions at the end of the day. Mackinnon finally got on the pace on stage six. The field fourth fastest and now ninth overall. Despite his problems on the road section, Sykes was second fastest on the last stage of the day. Colin McRae, though, was the late charger of the day. Fastest by almost 10 seconds, over 26 kilometers. If McRae was going for a big lead, that was the last thing Burns wanted. Robert Reed counts down to take a 30-second loss and drop to third. Okay, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. Fifth on the final stage and just out of the points, pretty lights. Citroen's dream gravel debut was cut short when the electrics in Rads from Zara ended his rally. It looked deliberate, but Solberg lost over a minute on the final stage with a gearbox problem. Ending the day fourth, Marco Martin. So at the end of a day of cat and mouse, McRae has bitten the bullet and will try and win the rally from the front. Sykes and Burns will have the advantage of a cleaner road. Just out of the points, but not out of the frame. Loix, Rovenpera and Mackinac. The important thing is that you're not running in front of your main competitors tomorrow so that we, you can slow down again tomorrow. That's the, that's the crucial thing, to dictate their positions on the last day, when then it doesn't matter. All of the stages on the last day, we can just go flat out over everyone, which, which everybody wishes we could do on every stage of the, of the whole rally, but unfortunately um, we can't, so we're forced to, to do these things just like Ford did in, uh, in Cyprus.
ruts in our bed draw. What do you make of Richard dropping back, I think, 30 seconds on you over that last stage? Yeah, it's a lot, it's a, it's a lot of time to drop. Um, he could have gauged it a, you know, a bit closer than that, I think, but you know, that's up to him. It might be too much. A streak of genius or a foolish risk. Colin McRae plans to give it maximum attack on day two to see if he pulls it off. Join us tomorrow.